With the vaccination programme well underway, questions are being asked about why Scotland appears to be lagging behind. <laughs> the Scottish Government insists it's because they're concentrating on care home residents first and the rate is speeding up. The SNP is hoping to make pandemic competence a key feature of their cell in the upcoming Holyrood elections. And they believe a decisive win would grant them a mandate for another independence referendum. At some stage people are going to ask, uh, how shall we build back and, and who shall lead us in that task? And I think the people of Scotland need to know that the offering is clear. Either you want Boris Johnson to lead Scotland back from the pandemic, which I don't think people do, or you want the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon, and that requires independence. The problem you've got, though, is that the Westminster government and Boris Johnson have been clear that they're not going to be granting the right for a referendum anytime soon. What will you then do? In my view, that is the problem of the Westminster government, not the problem of the Scottish government. It can choose to deny the democratic wish of the people of Scotland by attempting legal action. Needless to say, the UK government maintains such a referendum would be illegal. But momentum seems to be with the nationalists. The latest poll conducted for the Sunday Times shows the majority of voters in Scotland want a referendum. So is the breakup of Britain now inevitable? I'll take no part in an illegal referendum because the decision taken in 2014, which both sides said they would accept and agree to, was to remain part of the United Kingdom. It is a distraction, a distraction from their 14 years in power here in Scotland. Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP always go back to independence because their own record here in Scotland is not one they can be proud of. A lot of people in Scotland believe, rightly or wrongly, that Nicola Sturgeon has handled the pandemic well. They do not believe that about Boris Johnson. Well, I do think there is a perception issue here in Scotland that somehow Nicola Sturgeon has handled this differently from the UK government, because anyone looking at this impartially would really struggle to see where the differences have been. So Nicola Sturgeon has perhaps communicated in a different way, but the approach here in Scotland has been roughly the same as across the United Kingdom. But whatever the Scottish Conservatives might say, astonishingly the biggest threat to Nicola Sturgeon could come from her own predecessor. She's facing an ongoing inquiry into how she handled sexual harassment complaints about former First Minister Alex Salmond. Mr Salmond accuses Nicola Sturgeon of misleading Parliament. There are false conspiracy theories being spun about this and in that... Coming from Alex Salmond. Forgot, well, look, by Alex Salmond, by people around him, you can draw your own conclusions around that. I did not mislead Parliament, so I'm not going to speculate on uh, what might happen in the future. Now more than ever, the future is uncertain. But a standoff between the UK and Scottish governments is looking increasingly likely.